Hi guys, I'm going to go through Wednesday's bar modelling problems. Don't forget question one and two was more for key stage one children, um, but I want you to have a go at the bar modelling was my priority. I know you know how to work them out. Um, and then three and four was kind of more key stage two. Um, but again, I wanted to see the bar models. So question one, Annie bakes some cookies. Mm. In the morning, she sells six cookies. In the afternoon, she sells nine cookies. There are eight cookies left over. How many cookies did she bake? So to represent this as a bar, I would think about all together how much Annie sold or how many cookies she made. That's what we're trying to work out. I know that on, in the morning she sold six cookies and I know in the afternoon she sold nine cookies and she had eight left over. So now I can work out how much all together, how many um, cookies she baked all together. I go 6 and 9 is 15, plus 8 is 23. This is how I would do a bar model for this one. If you did it slightly different, that's okay. I saw some people did 3 and 9 and 8, and then added them all together. That would be absolutely fine as well. There's no, like, absolute one way of doing bar modelling. I'm just going to show you how I would do it. Question 2. Meg has two number cards, A and B. A is bigger than B. The sum of A and B is 100. The difference between A and B is 24. What is the value of A? So I've got A and B. I know that the total of A and B, oh, the total is 100. And we like to put our total here. We use one of these big brackets, um, which we use sometimes in English. And we use this to um, show our total. Um, a is bigger than B, so I'm going to draw A's bit bigger than B's bit, so I can visually see that A needs to be bigger. The difference between A and B is 24. I might show that slightly differently. The difference between A and B is 24. Let me flip over my thing. So A is this much. Hope you can see that. B is this much, A, B, and then here, the difference is 24. And I know that all together, we equal 100. This is what the bar model should look like for this one, okay? Next up, question three. Sandy and Ken have a thousand stickers in total. Uh, Sandy gives Ken 80 stickers. Ken now has four times as many stickers as Sandy. How many stickers did Sandy have at the start? So they have a thousand stickers in total. Oh my gosh, a thousand stickers in total. Thousand in total. Sandy gives Ken 80 stickers. Ken now has four times as many stickers as Sandy. So I know in my head, as a fraction, they that's kind of, they've split their stickers up into fifths. That part's Ken's, that's Ken's, that's Ken's, that's Ken's, and that bit is Sandy's, because Ken has four times as many as Sandy. Does that make sense, hopefully? And I know that if I have a thousand, and I split it up into fifths, a thousand divided by five, and what's 10 divided by five is two, a hundred divided by five is 20, a thousand divided by five is 200. So I know that each of these is 200. But that's currently, because this only looks like this because Sandy gave Ken a uh, 80 of her stickers. So we want to know how many Sandy had at the start. So we would just do 200 stickers. She's given Sand, uh, she's given Ken some of her stickers. That was a subtraction, so we need to do the inverse. We need to add on 80 stickers, and that will be kind of that little bit there. There's those 80 stickers. 200 add 80 equals 280. Number four. Sorry, that, that is the bar model to represent that. Um, yours might not look exactly the same, but that's how I would do it. You can represent these in different ways. 
Every month, John spends one third of his money on rent. Of the remaining money, he spends 25% on going out. He spends £460 on bills and has £50 left over, all bit fractions. How much money does John earn every month? Okay, so here is John's earnings all together. We know he spends one third, about that much, one third on oh, rent. We know he spends, the out of this that's left, he spends 25% on going out. To work out what 25% is of this whole, 25% is four, is four quarters. So I'm going to split this in half and quarter. So 25% here, which is one quarter, so one quarter of this is uh, going out, going out. And the rest of his money, oh, he spends, the rest of his money here is the £460 that he spends on bills and £50 that he has left over. So I know that this part must be 510 This part here is 510 510 Now I know what this part is. I can, this is three quarters of this block. So I'm going to work out what this part is next. Uh, five, ten divided by three. Three goes into five once. Carry the two, seven, zero. So each of these parts is 170. So all together, 170 times four. 170 times four. Can you see what I'm doing? Uh, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 7 is 28, carry that 2, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So this part here, now I can rearrange my um, bar model, is 680. Now I've still got one third of rent, so I need to work out what one third of this is. I'm going to have to do some rubbing out so I've got some space. If this is one third, how many thirds are left? This is two thirds. So I need to work out what one third is and times it by three so I can work out what the whole is. Uh, three, six, uh, 380 halved is 340, which is this part. And then I can add them together. Zero, 12, 1,200. So all together, he gets paid £1,020 each month. What a lucky guy John is. That was really, really tricky. If you did one and two correctly and kind of followed that, that's great. But I'm still going to show you what these um, more tricky ones are and how I would use this to help me process the question. Because the more we practice and the more you see me modelling it, the easier it will get. I know this is tricky. That was a hard question. That was like a year six three mark question but you know whatever right guys that was maths for today mark with a different color pen don't change your answers you're only cheating yourself see you later